Melbourne Park, the home of Crystal Palace. That's your palace lottery ticket. Over the last two years, Palace's fortunes have slumped. They've been relegated from the first division and are now struggling in the second. Today, the club's expecting one of their biggest crowds of the season for a home derby against Queen's Park Rangers. Even so, the team know they'll be playing to stands and terraces that are half empty. The fans are staying away. I think the club was about one three quarter million in debt when I took over, which in those days was a lot of money. But on the other hand, I didn't really care. I'd run a football team from the age of 11 in Crystal Palace. It's like being an institution. Palace owes the bank about £600,000 and is losing thousands of pounds a week. Really, it was, it was hand to mouth. I had to sell a player each month to keep the club in business. And there was a bit of a boardroom battle going on at the same time as we were trying to fight the financial pressures. Alison said he'd give himself six weeks to bring success to the Palace. That was six weeks ago, and Palace have had little success. Everyone's saying to us, what about Malcolm? No one's saying to Malcolm, what about us? He and I remain good friends, but I couldn't really work with Malcolm, unfortunately. I wasn't aware of the history, the anti-Brighton, anti-Mallory situation. I brought Mallory in because one of my directors at that time thought he'd be good for us and I followed on and appointed Alan. I think he wasn't 100% with us for reasons that were out of my control, probably were out of his. So I let Alan go and then of course took Bassett who changed his mind after three days. And in the meantime I'd met Steve Coppel. I used to go to matches scouting a lot and I saw Steve at games. He was a bit of a student of the game, he was still keen. I suggested that he went and talked to Ian Evans who he knew of but hadn't met. So Steve drove up north to meet Ian, two of them spent the day together and came back to me and said they'd like to apply for manager and assistant. Steve and I would go scouting every night and even Palace's away matches, I would tend to go scouting. And quite a number of the players that we signed, people like Jeff Thomas, were ones that I found. We only bought Jeff because we had 50,000 spare one summer. Mark Bright I saw come on as a sub for Port Vale away to South End. And when we were looking for centre forward, I said to Steve, we've got to take Mark Bright. I said, wherever you hit the ball to him, chest, head, thigh, anywhere, he just controls it. Steve came in to see me and said, Ron, we've got this player. He's just walked in, he's training with us. He's been rejected by Brighton and rejected by Brentford. He said, but he's got some, does some great, fantastic things with the ball. He said, he'd never be a pro. The following week, he comes in and he's still raving about the tricks that this boy does, but said, you know, he, he might be a player. What's his expense? He's something like 30 pounds a week. I said, right, we'll give him a contract for the value of his expenses. We had a built-in transfer fee that he could leave for, which at that time I think I had it in at 750,000, which was just a laugh. Well, at the end of his first contract, the 750 was suddenly worth a lot more than 750, and I'm thinking we could lose Ian now, but what was an inflated figure to start with, he's now worth more than that. There was a meeting between the chairman of Wimbledon, Palace and Charlton about having one South London club and merging the three clubs. We were even talking about colours and everything, and names and the rest of it. We had a fan survey about the merger that was never really on. The biggest thing that I probably achieved to help Palace out of its financial problems was ground sharing. Charlton came first and Wimbledon second. And now it's all down to Terry Geno in the Blackburn goal. That was a great team, but of course the club still lost money every year. And I was a great believer that it was the facilities in your stadium that gave you your football team. Of course, the first thing I was doing when I went there, I was building bars in the main stand, which gave us more money to spend on wages to keep players. There's no point in buying them if you couldn't pay their wages. Could do about it now in the second half. I was on a high at half time because we were only one nil down. 
because before you got back to your seat, Pemberton was steamed down the right wing, and we scored. It's there by Bright. It's Mark Bright straight from the kickoff, and Palace are level. What a dramatic start to the second half, and Liverpool are stunned. I went to see Yeovil play, and I bought Pardew after the game, seven half thousand. Gordon picked it on, and it's gone in. Pardew, four three Palace. After that match. I'm on the touchline and Pardew comes right across the pitch to me and he says to me, oh, best seven and a half grand you've ever spent because he just scored the winner, isn't he? And Crystal Palace are at Wembley. They've beaten Liverpool, whose dream of the double is destroyed. Coming back down the motorway after beating Liverpool, that was the biggest thrill in football. One of the most amazing matches, surely, in the history of the FA Cup. Oh, oh, oh. Just listen to this. Crystal Palace, who's played in all the divisions of the Football League. This is their finest hour, really, in the public eye. Thorna Wright is in there, and is it over the line, and it's a goal. Now here's Wright, his first chance to show what he can do, and he's through, it's Wright. Oh, what an impact by the substitute. It's 2-2. Nigel kicked long at the end. The sad thing about Wembley is we didn't play keep ball for the last seven minutes. Shots in the 3 3. No abuse. Our team were too young. They're inexperienced. Right on the far side now. He's got round in there. He's gone round the It's in there. Palace going into the lead. What a terrific shot by number 10, Ian Wright. A long one has been chipped by Solaco, and it's in. It's 2-2. Two -two. It's there. Thomas has got it. Ian Wright now. That's the second for Thomas. Goal went a good run through there for Wright. They took Liverpool in when they should have taken us in. And your intelligence and your knowledge of football is judged by the club you represent. We weren't as big a club as Liverpool. It was absolute rubbish. I mean, utter rubbish. Things that make you go. I got labelled by the newspapers as a racist, which is probably the, the lowest part of my football career. Garth Crooks asked me if I would do a programme about black players becoming managers. Because at that stage, I think six of our side were black players. But of course, they found there were no viewing figures. So they switched it into a racist programme, edited out everything that I'd said, and put the knife in. The players thought they'd done enough to stay up. They thought they were up. I'd worked out the goal difference, and I knew that if Oldham won their matches, we'd have an inferior goal difference to Oldham. And of course that's what happened. We got relegated. We got relegated after our team had done a lap of honour surviving. Fans used to criticise me because the club yo-yoed. But I used to believe that you had to yo-yo to start. Every year is up or down. It's a great club. Hopkins, look at a cut! The reason that I sold in the end was that the whole of the Croydon Advertiser back page had supporters saying that I should go and I'd done as much as I could for the club and now Goldberg should take over because Goldberg had promised them th the world, hadn't he? I gave my all very much so when I was at Palace. I'm quite proud of what I did because besides building that team with Steve, I mean, I also built the Whitehorse Lane stand I seated the Arthur Waite enclosure, I built the Holmesdale Road stand, I did the car park outside the ground and I built the, all the new director's suite three or four storeys outside the main entrance as well as refurbishing the whole of the main stand so we managed to do all of that as well as build a team.